You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. We really have to express our gratitude to the Chicago National Weather Service on this one. I don't think you're going to find this any place else. This is totally, totally amazing what they have picked up on. Uh, we have, let's just, this is a little bit of an update with more details from the previous episode. There's lots of warmth to talk about for this week. Lots of warmth, and we're going to get to that. But let's do the next week first. Then we're going to come back to this week because what's going on next week is something that you may not pick up on because not a lot of people are talking about it as far as I know. And I'll tell you the reason why. The reason is because it goes undetectable. We do not have any Arctic, no significant Arctic outbreaks are happening from next week or the week after or to cont- for the rest of February. At least there are no forecasters. That's not in the forecast. Forecasters are not forecasting that. Long-term forecasters are not forecasting that. And then when you go into the upper Midwest, places that generally get snow, you'll see that even after the fronts move through, above normal temperatures are expected, even for the very beginning of this weather pattern transition. So who says the weather pattern will be transitioning? Well, the number one, we have meteorologist Tom Skilling, who spoke about this last week already. Uh, We have also, he said around the mid parts of February, we're going to see a weather pattern change. Indicators, indicators are that the weather pattern may become more winter-like. Meteorologist, some say he's a social meteorologist, but he might be more than that. Bob Clubs has shared, this is down in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, but he shares weather on Patreon, also for St. Louis, Missouri. And he has shared already several days ago of a potential system moving through what he was calling Valentine's Day, February 14th, which just looked like the classic system to bring heavy snow, potential heavy snow into that area. So we have uh, lots to talk about when you move towards the middle Mississippi Valley. And then when you hit Chicago, you'll see forecasters are tuned into something that uh, – uh, forecasters from other cities don't seem to be tuned into. And the reason for that is because of the snow and the Arctic air. The Arctic air, the National Weather Service tells us February 10th onward, a special, special section was added on to the forecast discussion today and has been left there all day to talk about what's going to be going on February 10th onward for the Chicago area, the lower Great Lakes, for the rest of this month. Well, they go on and explain very interesting stuff about all the different oscillation indexes. Arctic oscillation index, North Atlantic, we go into the Pacific, all the different oscillation indexes. When all is said and done, they say that there will be a weather pattern change starting around or slightly before February 14th. But the first indicator of the change is going to be happening this Friday, right behind a cold front that's moving through the Chicago area. What better day could there be for change than Rosh Chodesh Adar? That's this Friday. That Adar is a Vinahafa Chuv. To those that understand, things are supposed to switch around. The very beginning, the roots of the change take place on Friday. We may not feel the change right away. But the change really, it's a gradual change apparently, and it really starts starts to take shape more around February 14th, and then it continues after that. The city which will be feeling the change the most might actually be the lower Great Lakes. So, and let's just explain why. The reason is because we have a continued El Nino weather pattern which means the southern track is going to remain active. We have cold air that's going to become locked in place, a good chance of that happening from mid-February for the rest of the month. But the Arctic air is locked up in the Arctic. But the cold air, solid cold air. For some cities, this might even be above normal. But either way, the air is cold enough for snow. Solid cold air, which is cold enough for snow. We have the, it's a ridge, it's a, it's a cold ridge, which they think coming out of Canada will get locked here in the Midwest. 
Meanwhile, the southern track, the active El Nino southern track, will be possibly cutting, will be cut off, cut off, will, will cut into the ridge as it has been throughout the winter, bringing its storms as it tracks through the south. The only thing is these storms tend to kind of move a little bit to the northeast as it moves south. And on many maps, you'll see the mid-Atlantic area getting above normal snowfall during an El Nino year. But that could very well be the eastern Great Lakes, the southern Great Lakes. It could very well be just a little bit further west. So you're looking in a city like Chicago. It is cold enough in Chicago for the, this time of the year, especially with the cold lake water temperatures uh, where we get lake enhancement. It is cold enough for solid snow if we're on the back side of these systems. And the Storm systems just have to be taking a track just far enough north to hit the Chicago area. And that's something that could happen in Chicago. So this type of uh, poss- possible, possible significant snows from several systems might only be relevant for cities like Chicago. As of now, you look at the storm tracks, you'll see one for the latter part of next week. Almost looks like it's missing Chicago. It's really going far down south. But in the beginning of next week, we have the European computer model. I know earlier today we said the GFS. It switched around. The GFS sometimes is more accurate when you look a little bit beyond seven days, but or especially around 10 days. But then it becomes the European computer model. So the European computer model is saying something similar to what the GFS model was saying earlier, just a little bit further south. The GFS model had the heavier snowfall accumulations uh, also going just going through the southern portions of the Chicago area. This one has it going even further south, going through cities like Kankakee, uh, Indiana. We have a similar thing from the Texas Panhandle going into Springfield, Missouri, to Springfield, Illinois, on into Indiana, northwest Indiana, on into Ohio, portions of Pennsylvania. This is all for Monday, February 12th. A second area of low pressure develops off the mid-Atlantic coast, possibly bringing snow, possibly bringing snow again to Baltimore, maybe four inches, again, around the same time. That's how the European computer model sets it up. I don't know enough about the Baltimore weather to tell you. It it, it looks iffy, iffy to me for that area, but uh, we know that these storm systems tend to produce six to 12 inches in the bullseye here in the Midwest. Chicago tends to miss the bullseye, as so do many cities, so three to six inches does sound reasonable, but right now the European computer model does show it going a little bit too far down uh, south of Chicago. At the same time, it does show a flow coming in off of Lake Michigan, which one would think should be capable of producing some type of lake effect snow uh, with such northeast winds. We go into... uh, The mid parts of the week, the temperatures gradually get colder as we go. And we have, again, a little systems develop into big systems uh, as these little uh, (laughs) clipper systems bring their cold fronts through. And then the storm systems tend to develop along those boundaries. That's going to be the general weather pattern for the last two weeks of February. So I don't know what that says for the upper Midwest. And I don't know what it says for way down south. But the significant winter weather may be confined to the central portions of the United States. And perhaps that's why it is only the Chicago National Weather Service that has actually designated a whole section to this. Um, or you can come up with your own reasons why this might be. Let's go take it back to this week because for many people this week is the most exciting week. Uh, All winter, perhaps it's the most exciting week in weeks and months that we've ever had. We have a, you know, if 90 degrees in the summer, according to the New York Times, three consecutive days of 90 degrees or higher, that's called a heat wave. And they claim three consecutive days of 70 degrees or higher is a November heat wave. So we're going to be getting many cities here in the Midwest three consecutive days of 60 degrees higher. Very reasonable to call that a winter heat wave. For many locations here in the Midwest, we have records which are almost going to be broken, possibly even broken from 1882 for Des Moines, Iowa. Record 61 degrees on Tuesday from 1882. Forecast highs are close to that. Not quite that, but Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, high temperatures mid-50s to low-60s for a place like Des Moines, 
Iowa. The Chicago area, temperatures going into the 50s. Thursday is going to be the day. For Chicago, you really have to get wind straight out of the southwest to overcome that lake. So we are going to be confined. Uh, the 50s will be confined to possibly just one day, uh, maybe two. But that three-day spell uh, will have mild temperatures for three days, but not 50s or 60s. St. Louis could easily be getting 60 degrees for three consecutive days. And it goes without saying, a city like Memphis, that could be happening as well. While what's bringing all of this warmth? Well, if you look on the map, it's an intensifying. You could be very convinced that it's an intensifying storm system coming out of Wyoming. Some people like to call it a Colorado low, but this one's coming a little bit further north. Coming out of Wyoming, it has its connections to the uh, to the West Coast right now with all of that atmospheric river. It's coming out of Wyoming. It's intensifying. One would think that there would be heavy snow on the backside. But the first half of it up, up in North Dakota might be falling as rain. So when all is said and done, they might be j- just be getting four inches. I would imagine you'll have some area that's going to get uh, an old snow event from this. It certainly is an intense low pressure system going across the upper Midwest. It never does quite cross the Midwest until it's way to the north. So we have strong southerly winds out ahead of the system for several days. That, that's what's bringing in all the warmth. That's number one. Then we have number two. Number two, this high pressure ridge. It's an area of high pressure that's situated over the Midwest right now. That's going to be bringing that combined for Chicago. It's really combined with this storm system moving right across the Gulf Coast, which was responsible for bringing heavy rain to the Memphis area. This storm system moves into the southeast portions of the United States, and when you have storms on the east coast, they bring a backflow of north wind on the back side of it, and the way these things impact Chicago is a lot of times Chicago ends up in the northeast flow, and Chicago has a really cold water lake just to the northeast. So the Chicago temperatures are going to be quite cold, but not very cold. Just we're going to have those northeast winds around for tonight, especially tomorrow. And then when this high pressure area, move, the high pressure ridge, it moves off to the east. That's when winds become south and the winds intensify the closer you get to that storm system out in the plains. So, but here is round two of the warmth. Part two of the warmth. Part one is just the south winds. Part two of the warmth is best described by the Memphis, Tennessee National Weather Service. When the high pressure, when this high pressure centers itself off the coast of the United States, almost resembling a Bermuda high, we now have a flow of humid air moving into the central part of our country. Air around high pressure... That air goes clockwise. It goes clockwise. So when you have a high pressure system over there, you have clockwise air moving or go, moves off the Atlantic Ocean into South Florida. It continues moving west into the Gulf of Mexico and then moves north into Louisiana, continues north into Missouri, and then moves northeast into the Chicago area. But So that what brings in the high dew point air. In this case, we have the high dew point air, meaning humid. Humid, officially humid, is a dew point of about 59 or higher. Some say 60 or higher. That makes it as far north of, as about Memphis, Tennessee. And that's why they are the best ones to go to to describe this. They're getting in on part two, where the air will have somewhat of a summer feel Friday morning for a period of time that also could be responsible for bringing thunderstorms, not just for them. Regarding thunderstorms, we could see those in St. Louis as well, Thursday night into early Friday. Even in Chicago, there could be there could be some rumbles of thunder. In fact, from Memphis, you might even get some severe weather out of this. You might. There might be some severe weather out of this. So this is really almost has a summer feel as temperatures soar well into the 60s, dew points approaching 60 Friday morning. 
morning. That's the part two of the warmth. So we have two reasons for the warmth and two different types of feel. We have the warm and dry air, and then we have the warm and moist air, which will come along with precipitation. And therefore, you might even have some areas which are warmer up north than down south because up north it's dry. The sun is more efficient at heating dry air, uh, and that's why you would see that. But the summer feel would, summer feel, relatively speaking, might exist. Well, not, you know, if it's 60 and moist in the morning, there is somewhat of a summer feel to that. Okay, now, moving right along. Again, the end of this starts that storm system up in the upper Midwest. It moves northeast. It has its trailing cold front that moves across the Midwest on Friday, moving off the mid-Atlantic coast on uh, Saturday. That is the very beginning of a weather pattern change, which I don't believe all forecasters have picked up on this. Okay, because it's not going to be felt right away, but this is the very beginning of it. And that's on Friday. It's gradually going to intensify this weather pattern change. And one is going to have to analyze it carefully or uh, to really pick up on the potential winter weather for the final two weeks of February because no major Arctic air is in the forecast and there cannot be. Uh, heavy snow in the forecast this far in advance, but there is the potential, the potential for the storm track to be a little bit further north than what it usually is during an El Nino year, especially as you go east. And that's uh, Chicago looks like it really might be affected by this, and uh, that's why it's being pointed out, I believe. AccuWeather points out that the first two weeks of March will take on a very wintry feel. For the eastern U.S., and a lot of times that applies to the Midwest as well. But they point out long-term forecasters do believe that a spring feel will start to take over for the final two weeks of March. be interesting to see if that turnaround happens by Rosh Chodesh Adar Beis. What would that be, March 10th? I don't know when that would be. Uh, but, and then... You know, the turnaround, the seeds might be then, but it may take a few days before you feel it. Okay, (laughs) that was a lot that was said. There's a lot going on over here. We have almost two seasons colliding, and uh, winter is not over. We we might, could be winter hasn't even started. The snow season, uh, relatively speaking, for the eastern portions of the Great Lakes, which might even include Chicago. We're just being, we we don't know. Anyways, thank you for listening. Thank you for your interest. I wish everybody a wonderful week. Enjoy the mild weather, the really mild weather. And uh, it might be the calm before the storm. We pointed out before 1967, Chicago had the largest snowstorm on record about 23 inches of snow. And one week before that, we had unseasonably warm air with temperatures in the 60s. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful night. You've been listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. This podcast can be found on almost every platform where podcasts are available.